Hi, this is Matthew Oates with Salient Process. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build UI and IBM BPM using the Spark UI Toolkit. Uh, and you can back that UI with integrations. Uh, these integrations won't require boundary events. They won't even require business objects. This is really nice when you want to build coach views that are backed by integrations and truly want to be able to reuse them in, in any context. Uh, so right off the bat, let's just take a look at, uh, at what an end user might see with uh, some UI that's backed by an integration. So what we have here is just some input. Uh, it's asking me to type in the name of a first name of, of a beetle. Maybe I'll type in my name. I was not a beetle. Uh, so when I press retrieve, the results are going to be unknown. So I'm not a beetle, so it's not going to know what my favorite information is. But let's say we type in Ringo here. Ringo, it's going to return results. So what's actually happening here in the back end is uh, I take this input, I press a button. That button's going to execute some integration. I'll show you where that where that is, and that integration returns back some pieces of data to the uh, to the clients uh, to the client side uh, human service in the coach view here. So this is all self-contained in a coach view. So why don't we d dig a little bit deeper and see uh, exactly how this service uh, works. Uh, I want to make sure you uh, understand that if you want any, uh, any information about the controls that we're working with, you can always go to support.salientprocess.com. Uh, click on the UI toolkit here. Uh, the main thing we're going to be talking about in this video is the the service call. So if I scroll down here to service call, that's uh, where you can get all of the reference documentation for, for what I'm going to show. So uh, let's look at the uh, process designer. Uh, this is the web process designer. It's great in the new release, the, the March release uh, in March 2017. It's uh, really, uh, really speedy now, really stable. We're glad to see all those improvements that the IBM team has done. Uh, and then in an upcoming release, uh, we're going to have uh, Spark UI built in as well. Um, so uh, we can go ahead and start using Spark UI. You can download it from our website now, um, and then eventually get, we'll get built in. So uh, what I have here is a client-side human service, and you'll see I just called it test uh, integration. So one thing you're going to notice right off the bat is there was some UI and there was an integration uh, there, but notice there's no boundary events. So that's one of the big uh, features of Spark is we're not required. We certainly can if we want to, uh, but we're not required to um, use boundary events if we want to integrate with external uh, systems. So uh, we don't have to have boundary events. Uh, another neat thing about Spark UI is we don't have to have business objects if we don't want business objects. Uh, we could certainly have business objects so that we can maybe pass data from service to service in IBM BPM. Uh, but a lot of times uh, we have UI that needs to render in a certain way, but we don't necessarily need to pass you know, that data that's, that's created. Maybe you have a UI that's backed by an integration and uh, you don't necessarily need all of that information stored in a business object. So in this example, I'm not using any business objects uh, to render the UI and to make that integration call. Again, you certainly could do that if you wanted to, um, but I'm not doing it uh, here. So let's go ahead and look at the coach. Uh, so on our coach, it's actually pretty straightforward. We just have a vertical layout. Uh, we have a, an, a reusable coach view called integration here. I just have a button. All right. So. Uh, let's go ahead and maybe drill down into this coach view and, and, and take a look at the, the parts of the coach view. Uh, at the top, we have a service call control. Uh, the service call control is what lets us be able to um, get and retrieve information f through AJAX uh, from a, an external source. So we can attach an AJAX service. In this case, since we're using WebPD, we have a, a service flow here. Uh, we can, uh, you know, provide input values, or we could bind this directly to an object if we wanted to. Uh, or we could also have this call get executed programmatically. So what I mean by that is uh, how this call actually gets executed at, the, at, at runtime. Uh, when someone presses this button, we'll see now uh, Spark UI controls have built in a, event capability. What, what this does is allows us to, when we click this button, execute this service call. So this is how, uh, we're, we're previously, we used to have boundary events, and when you'd click a button, it'd go to the boundary event, and then it'd go to another integration, and then you know, from that integration, it would return back uh, to the page. Uh, in this case, we can actually just use some simple JavaScript 
That allows us to reference this service call, execute the service call. We use just a basic uh, uh, JSON here and actually just the uh, first name text.get text. So that's referencing this UI element. Uh, if you're not familiar with this syntax, uh, just check out the new UI red book or look at the documentation on Spark UI and this will be really familiar to you. Um, and so this is essentially going to say, use the value that's uh, at runtime in this control uh, to return some results. Uh, so then if I look at the service call, uh, it's really nice now, events are kind of first class citizens in WebPD. Uh, so we actually see now we can have some more JavaScript. So uh, when I return these results, I'm just gonna uh, map the color uh, to my control down here, uh, the street to the street, instrument to the instrument. Now, I don't have to do all of this JavaScript if I'm binding to actual objects. Uh, all I could do is just simply bind my business object uh, to this service call and it'll map everything automatically. In this example, I want to show you kind of uh, the most complex possible uh, service call, which is doing everything programmatically so I don't need business objects. And I say most complex because it's actually pretty, uh, pretty easy. <laughs> uh, you'll see this is just, you know, five lines of code that's going to allow us to um, get and retrieve using Ajax from another system. Last thing I want to show uh, before I kind of rerun this uh, is let's take a look at this service flow. So service flows are uh, either new or definitely have been updated in the March release. Service flows uh, allow us to, I could have scripts here, but then I could also, you know, certainly within this service flow, uh, be able to have a service task, uh, linked service flow. So I can do all of the things that previously you were doing with Ajax services and, you know, other services in the desktop process designer. So I actually don't even need to use desktop process designer anymore to, uh, to have this work. Uh, so again, let me, let me rerun this and we'll kind of go through the sequence of events now that we've kind of exposed how this works. So I'm going to run this. All right, so it's l loaded my uh, coach view. It's working here. I type George. George is going to get some other information back. Maybe I can t type Paul, and each time I press retrieve, what's happening? So I'm going to go here in the coach view. So when I press uh, retrieve, what does it do? It says on click, call my service. So execute this service call with the information in this field. So then what happens? This gets executed. And when there's a result, I'm mapping the colors that are here to here. So if I Kind of where do these colors come from just to go full circle in the video. Oh, I opened the service call accidentally instead of the, uh, the configuration. If I go here, you'll see that this information is just returned. I just have an example script here to, to show if I type Ringo, you know, do this. If I type John, it's going to have this information. So this could be any external call. It doesn't have to be a script, obviously. Uh, and you can have that information returned. Uh, client side. So pretty neat functionality, but uh, the kicker here, what makes this really, really cool is um, at this point, now that I've built all of that into the coach view itself, remember, let's go back up to the diagram. There's nothing needed here. There's even no variables needed here. So if you're watching this video, you're probably already, and you're familiar with IBM BPM, you'll probably already see where the value is. And I'll show you real quick. And this is, for those of you familiar with IBM BPM, this is going to be kind of one of those aha moments that are, that are great. So the coach view itself is now completely modular. I can drag and drop this coach view in any other context, in any other service, and it's going to be fully functioning because there's no configuration I need to set up here because I'm not requiring it be bound to an object. Um, there's no configuration here, uh, and there's no configuration at the diagram. So what does that mean? If I have a completely new human service, why don't I go ahead and create that? So Matthew's Matthew example uh, service, client-side human service. All right, so I'm going to co completely create this from scratch. I'm going to go here to my coach. So, yep, yeah, default coach. Why don't I just go ahead and throw in a, a vertical layout here, maybe a button. And all I have to do is say integration. 
it's completely self-contained. So I don't have to do anything. Uh, you know, I, I'd like to have my button at least say something down here, so I'll do that. I can go back to my diagram, just complete the service flow here. And that coach view, I don't have to do anything with, and it's going to run just fine. So here's Matthew, client-side human service. I'm going to run this. I'm going to say, uh, John, retrieve. Everything works just fine. So that is incredibly powerful if you truly want to build completely modular coach views. You can back all of your UIs uh, with integrations seamlessly uh, using the Spark UI toolkit. And the good news is this toolkit is getting built in as the, the next gen toolkit into IBM VPM. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. Definitely check out our YouTube channel if you want to see more videos about how to use the Spark UI toolkit and also support.salientprocess.com. Uh, allows you to uh, get access to this information. In fact, if you want to download the example uh, that I just showed, just go into your downloads once you've registered, and you're going to be able to click on, you should see uh, Discover Spark Process app. So when you do that and download it, you'll be able to see uh, the example that I just showed. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching, and uh, have a good one.